us. Welcome everybody to this session of the Regal Muse Art, a monthly episode uh, offering large number of very interesting topics with very interesting speakers. So today we have JL with us. Let me just give a very quick brief introduction. J. Lakshmi Narayanan or JL for short, right? <laughs> I never knew you were J. Lakshmi Narayanan until I read your name on the uh, on the poster, JL. So uh, JL is a chartered accountant uh, and has had a very successful career spanning two decades and diverse industries. And after serving uh, in the industry for as a CA for so many years, he decided to shift and he got into something which is totally, totally different, and that is training to be a coach. The I must say, JL, that requires enormous amount of courage and conviction, and kudos to you for demonstrating that. Thank you. Thank you, Rekha. Yeah. So um, he signed up with Regal for his coach training in August 2022, which is not long ago. And since then, JL has completed his uh, ACC. He's an ACC credentialed coach. He's completed his PCC training and he's now in the journey to become a PCC credentialed coach. So we can see how serious uh, JL is about coaching. We also know he's very serious about coaching because he's very recently set up his own business as a solopreneur, offering one-on-one -on -one coaching services to CFOs as well as team coaching to several multi-layered teams. I personally have seen how serious and how sincere and how committed JL is to the uh, coaching profession. And I've also seen, JL, how you have moved since the time I saw you first, how you have moved and grown as a human being while you know working on yourself, while serving others through your coaching uh, services. So really acknowledge you for your growth and your progress. Uh, with that, uh, let me hand over to you, JL. Please share with us what inspires you and what has inspired you to be a coach because it's a mystery. And then lead us into this extremely intriguing topic of feeding the mind with matters of money. Personally, as I was sharing with you before we uh, started the session, I'm extremely curious to know what is it about money that we are going to feed the mind with. So over to you. Take us away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rekha, for the for the introduction and uh, all the nice words that you said. Um, as well, I just want to thank uh, Subhash and uh, Regal for giving this platform and have, creating this opportunity as well. And, and specifically to you, Rekha, I think when you started in the small group asking, um, creating this opportunity where I said, okay, I will do it without even having an idea what I'm going to present. I just felt that it's an opportunity where I will grab it and see what, what I can do. Um, so what got me into coaching, uh, I think I've started feeling that it's uh, over a period of time, um, people matter, whichever career that uh, anybody chooses. And particularly if a corporate, in corporate, I think person grows over a period of time, I think it's, it's all about people that's uh, that's what is going to matter for a leader right so rather than being in a space where i feel constrained about what's happening and not being able to express myself completely i felt coaching is something where i felt more resonated uh, with in terms of the methodology that we follow and i felt more natural uh, for my kind of personality i felt i think i'm i'm fitting in that place right so i think that's that's what uh, got me into coaching and uh, once i started learning the nuances started to build on further. Like you said, um, Rekha, it's ACC after that PCC and then have setting up the coaching business and uh, that's, that's how things are progressing. So that's about me. So without uh, taking away much time, so we'll get started in terms of the topic for today. I'll start sharing my screen. So I put it on slideshow for uh, better visibility. Um, I can't see any of you. So in case you have any questions or if you want to pass me somewhere, so feel free to um, unmute and 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 uh, speak. And uh, maybe Rekha, if you can help me, if, 
if somewhere i need to stop you can uh, if you can pitch in that will be helpful so the topic money matters again the topic itself um, two ways to look at it one way i think uh, financial matters is how we call it as a legal matters is how we call things as right so from that perspective money matters is one way to look at it and money matters in everyone's life so whether it's corporate or the personal life that we have personally professionally everywhere i think money is one aspect that uh, it's important for everyone and uh, over the period of years we would have experienced that probably it's one of the sources of stress as well right so been in situations where we felt that uh, maybe i'm not in uh, in a sufficient Uh, space where i have sufficient money with me or uh, maybe i feel that uh, i've taken certain wrong decisions so could be any of that space and uh, certainly i think this is one area which ha- also has a cascading effect in other aspects other areas of life as well right so from that perspective i felt that maybe uh, it's a good opportunity to talk about this aspect specifically keeping keeping in mind uh, about the mindset part of it rather than just um, going technically looking at uh, aspects relating to money how can we um, maybe in a be in a space where we were able to think uh, differently and then apply our mind right so that's that's a kind of intention with which uh, this presentation has been put together so in terms of agenda we'll start with an overview of certain things which i want to cover maybe setting the context as well as uh, maybe talk a little bit about uh, as certain aspects about money we will talk about and uh, a video which i want to share there are some some perspective which you will get by looking at that video so that's what we'll cover in terms of the overview second aspect is about generating money uh, which again is we are aware of of uh, how that happens but in the flow of Uh, the information and the way the presentation has been done so that's an important aspect to look at before we move into the investment part so again we are shifting there in terms of when i call about investment it's more from the personal finance standpoint so we'll get our attention towards that look at uh, various aspects when it comes to investments what options available and what's the kind of uh, impediments that could come or what are the key things that you need to consider when it comes to investments finally we will uh, consolidate it and summarize right so um, the main sources which i have used for this presentation um, is about uh, one of the programs that i did with peter sage so it's on personal growth or self growth program where uh, money was also one of the aspects that was covered it's it was quite an extensive one it was six month intensive program in which one part of it was about money so the inspiration came from there uh, there will be few of the quote uh, some some quote i will be referring from that uh, program as well and the second source is uh, economic times wealth that comes on a weekly basis uh, so there is a specific column which is written by person by name dhirendra kumar so i think his work i i, I liked a lot uh, the way he writes the contents and uh, trying to create a new perspective when it comes to money and and personal finance right so that's that's been main another source started collating the information for um, almost a year and uh, whatever i found very interesting and relevant for for the discussion that i wanted to have i have taken that paper cutting and based on that i've done the preparation here as well so i just want to give credit to to those two sources uh, so before we jump in anything to ask here uh, are we good to go no questions so far jl i have requested people to post their questions in the chat box and sure. maybe i'll call them out from there for you sure thank you thank you rekha yeah okay in terms of overview so though this is about personal finance and talking about uh, money and investment we're not talking about specifically as numbers right so and uh, it's not about uh, any investment strategies that we want to discuss about right so because there's plenty of information available um, so many sources of information available as far well as with with youtube go in and then you can get uh, several uh, concepts that you can understand and certain nuances that you can understand and then you can apply those or take the help from there and then do it 
But I think here I wanted to focus on, can we pass or slow down a little bit and think more in terms of how do we expand the mindset when it comes to money? More of a awareness that we can get from this session and how do we reflect on what's coming up? Maybe some of the contents could be something that you would have seen in the past or something that you're familiar with. But I think my only request is that uh, look at it in the context of how the the presentation has been prepared. Just be in that flow to see what uh, emanates for you. So moving on, I think this is the first one which I wanted to talk about. If we talk about mindset, the question comes, first question that comes up, it's what's my relationship with money? Right, so do I feel, as Rick, I was saying before, just before the session started, right? So it's a weak relationship uh, with money, right? So some of us may associate it that way. Or I would feel that maybe I'm neutral. Um, I don't have any specific thing to say. Or for people, it could be like, I feel anxious when it's about money. And I feel overwhelmed because I don't know. There are too many things to look at. So the relationship matters a lot in setting the foundation of what we want to do, right? So maybe take a moment. Moment I said relationship with money, what's going on in your mind currently? What are you experiencing at the moment? What's coming up for you, right? Just stay there. Observe that before we move forward. Second one is about values. How important money is in a person's life? What is the significance attached to that? Right, so this could be coming from the values which may be the inculcated from the elders in the family are certain things we could have picked up on our own, right? So what are the kind of values? Example to share is uh, yesterday I was just having a conversation with someone who wanted to speak about what's happening in his life. This person was sharing this. Um, certainly, I think uh, there is shortage of money with him at this moment and, uh, and uh, looking for next career opportunity. That's a juncture which he is in. Money means a lot. And that's the juncture he is in. Uh, a business opportunity comes up um, where his friend says that, uh, let's sell biryani. But this person thinks about it, says that uh, it's not in my value system. To me, I think his, his uh, personal dilemma is, though he's, he's in need of money, but his dilemma is that it's unhealthy. I don't want to be in the, in the business of serving biryani and then making money out of it. So despite the situation, that's the way a person thinks. So what is that which is, what is that? What is that uh, money? Uh, what does it mean to you, right? So what's the kind of value system we have, you have around that? That's another way to look at it. Second aspect to look at it. Third one is, is about the beliefs beliefs that are serving you, beliefs that are limiting in nature. Because as maybe again, an example to share is from, for me, I think uh, from my father, what I have seen is that money is important. It's hard to get and spend it wisely. And he thinks a lot for every penny that he spends. So that's, that's his belief. That's the way he has grown up. Um, and the way the, he has made money is that's the way he's, he looks at it. Is that something which that influences me? Probably I have a different mindset there because I have a different belief. The way I grew up, uh, where my needs were met and how I grew and uh, how I made a life out of uh, the education that has been provided and what came up and how did I get my own belief system about that, right? And uh, did I feel anxiety at any point in time? There are certain aspects. I mean, there have been situations where I felt that uh, maybe I'm, there is 
not sufficient money but does it cause any anxiety or am i feeling that um it's it's not serving me well or i'm not able to generate that money right so that's that's not been the belief that that's been there so if do your task money gets taken care of so that's that's kind of the belief that i built in but what is the belief that you have about money talking about these aspects now and uh, what's coming up for you just again pay attention to that as we as we keep progressing into the next part here which i wanted to talk about in overview so like i said the quote from peter sage so if you don't master money money will master you right so it's i think uh, as i looked at this i read about this right so it's it's one thing that emerges to me is that uh, it's about being in water if you are above water you are in much more control and you know how to handle yourself but if you are inside water right so what happens to you in terms of what's what's your experiences right so to me i think that's the image came up when i when i was relooking at this and then looking at um what comes to me when i was reading this again and in one of the posts that i did recently on linkedin as well when i mentioned this quote um so another person uh, who mentioned about uh, a movie movie uh, a song from rajinikanth's film that he quoted but i think in tamil it's clearly mentioned four lines which summarizes very clearly about this aspect so there could be certain other aspects that you may have looked at my invitation is just think about it maybe uh, something that you might have read in the past or something that uh, comes up to your attention at this moment just capture that as well so the next i just wanted to show a short video so this is for about 3 uh, and 1/2 minutes so vishen lakhiani is uh, where he talks about um, arigato money it's a japanese technique um so we'll just play that video um watch it and then come back before moving into the next slide so when i buy anything it has to do with how i spend and receive when i buy anything it has to do with how i spend and receive money hi can i get a black coffee please yeah grande so maybe you notice i close my eyes when i handed her the money i'm going to tell you what's going on there so the technique here is called the arigato money technique and it comes from ken honda so we're back in my office let me tell you what exactly is this technique so ken is famous for being japan's biggest writer he's written over 50 books in japanese and one of his projects was to interview 12,000 millionaires in japan and understand how they think about the world and what unique beliefs gave them their edge one of the people ken honda got to approach was wahei takeda the japanese billionaire often known as the warren buffett of japan ken asked wahei takeda for a secret and wahei said i'll teach you a simple technique it's called arigato money So what he's teaching was rather unique. He's teaching was very zen. And the answer to my question, what is the secret to wealth? He said, it's very simple. Arigato your money. And I didn't get it. Arigato your money? And he said, yes, with a big smile. Just arigato your money. That means appreciating your money. The thing I didn't know at the time was by saying arigato in, arigato out, I also had the practice of appreciation without knowing. I realized after a few days by saying thank you or arigato to your money, I felt very good about myself, my life, and I didn't know that was the effect of arigato in, arigato out. And also, I ended up making more money, or rather I say, I ended up receiving more money because the money kept coming in in a very mysterious way. Whenever I went to his office or on the way back in Nagoya, I always got the text message from my publishers that I got another reprint of my books in the past which is always strange because always the good news comes in when I was with Wahei and I think it was because I was in this mode of appreciating so much I somehow attracted abundance So I arigato when I bought this cup of Starbucks it was a statement of blessing but I also arigato recently when I had to sign a $100,000 check 
to a tech company providing us with a service we needed. That is also a form of arigatoing the money. So when you receive money with arigato and you give money with arigato, what you're doing is in your mind establishing this circular flow that money flows through you with blessings, with grace, with ease. This is the secret that Wahei Takeda spoke of in terms of the true mindset of the rich. And Ken Honda says what you start to find is that you eliminate your stress and your anxiety around money. And you start seeing more money come to you because what you appreciate appreciates. And you also see that what you are buying with your money comes to you in the most positive way. So it's a beautiful technique that I've been using in my life. If you found this idea interesting, join me and Ken Honda in our upcoming masterclass on Mind Valley, where we're going deep in the psychology and the mindset and the EQ of money. Okay. Uh, so I just want to pause here. Um, Anything that's coming up, uh, anyone has a question or uh, any perspectives that's coming up that you want to share here before we move on? Um, Jail, uh, I have a few thoughts that was coming up. Can I share? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this flow that he was mentioning reminded me of uh, one of the beliefs that uh, I had, which is on not Sorry, to block the it. money. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So not to block the money, release it to accumulate it more. And that release have to be with the positive mindset, not with any fear or any negative mindset. So mm -hmm. as you start releasing it, as you start spending it for a good cause in a more positive way, this universe returns it to accumulate it more. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Deepa. Yeah. I think uh, what I liked in that video is about the, the circular movement that you said, right? So the way he expressed it, I think that's something which, where is the money going, right? So it's just flowing through us. It, it comes in one form and goes out but it still, still stays as a value that you would have received, right? So I think that's been one of the key takeaways for me when I listened to it previously. And uh, probably it's all about the investments that's, that's mm -hmm. being, that we are making, right? So um, that's, that's what uh, showed up for me as uh, when I listened to that. Thanks Deepa for sharing that. Uh, Jail, if I can uh, chime in. See, uh, you know, when we are spending money, uh, I mean, I, 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 at least I can speak. Usually, you know, even if when you're buying a, a stuff of, of your choice, something that you want to, it's affordable. But, you know, gratitude is, is usually not the state of mind. Right? Uh, so, I think it's about consciously shifting, like vision, talks about you know when he closes his eyes when he when he's making the payment or when he's collecting the coffee so you know that trigger to be mindful of gratitude is something that is a fabulous reminder and it's a choice right very yeah. often subconsciously you still feel guilt you know you buy an expensive pair of shoes do you need to spend so much on a pair of footwear right after all but you know uh, I just bought one recently, so it's more present and more aware. So, yeah, so shifting that to gratitude, arigato money is, is a phenomenal reminder. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Subhash. JL, also what came up for me was, and Bhavani has shared something very similar to Subhash, what you, are, you just said about feeling guilty about spending money uh, and some realization there that she has got. What came up for me was this whole thing of flow, as you talked about it, JL. Uh, it was about letting it go and not holding on to it. Like, if I don't let it go, then there is something I'm losing. So there is this feeling of insecurity that I need to hold on to everything that I have. So when it is flowing, then there is a sense of movement and there is a sense of letting it go in the belief that it will come back. Yeah. If it has. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Thanks, somewhat Patrick. reminds me of you know uh, what people talk about in relationships, right? Let it go. If it's meant for you, it'll come back. And if it doesn't, then it was never for you. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, extending that, right? So it's like, if it's a flow, that is nothing that is going to stick to you, right? So comes in, it goes out and it's it's in circular movement. And, and that's how it is. And how do we, what's the kind of relationship that we want to establish that going back to that, what's the belief system that's coming up? What, how do I value money and relationships? So those things matter a lot. Nandini, uh, you have raised your hand. Yeah. Yeah, hi JL. So I'm also having a black coffee right now. <laughs> so I made it for myself. <laughs> so uh, what came for me, like uh, not just this video, when you were speaking about like values and beliefs about money, uh, it's true that like Subhash says, we used to feel guilty for spending money. But, but what promptly came out is I have to, my values is right to spend more on experiences rather than like accumulating more materialistic things. So if I'm going to spend for any experiences or a good cost, even if it's a huge sum, I should be comfortable uh, about that money. Whereas when it comes to like buying like stuff for materialistic things uh, i have to exercise prudent like how much i'm going to use it if it's just going to like be lying inside the cupboard like for months years it's just like waste of natural resources and other things i'm using because we keep moving from a one bedroom to two bedroom to three bedroom it's in like few years or months it's again full and full and full so that's something which i have been thinking but i've still not reached there but the realization is coming a bit stronger uh, my values are like to spend money more on experiences and be prudent when it comes to like accumulating things. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Shall we move on or I, I think I saw two more hands raised. Yeah, Satyajit has raised his hand yeah. to address uh, JL. Satyajit, yeah, okay. you have raised your hand. Is something you want to say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Jail, for the session. I think I remember, uh, you know, my other things is, uh, you know, the money has to get circulated. So he has been spending, giving money. And I was, uh, in the corona period, I got into that depression on saving money. So uh, I went to Igatpuri. Uh, you know, to enjoy with the family after Corona second lockdown. And afterwards, I got depressed. I, 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 was, I had spent around 31, 32,000 something. And I said, I shouldn't have spent this money. So I went to doctor and he gave me a tablet, all those things. But then I was not able to come out and I don't want to spend any money. So I said, I will save it because I said, I may have for 10 years the money stopped. So I should be able to use for next 10 years. Uske aage, I don't know what will the you know, so I calculated the money, you know, in, uh, you know, expenses of mine and everything I did. Then I met a Muslim guy, you know, Mr. Razi Karthi. You would also gone through this place. So I met him. And then afterwards, he told me the circulation. So he said, this is the time God has given you to spend the money. Uh, if you spend the money, it will circulate in the process. And once it circulates, it will come back to you. So then I started spending money and uh, the slowly money started flowing in back to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Satyajit, again for sharing and for sharing your vulnerability as well. So we'll just move on in the interest of time um, and then maybe pause at some other place and then see what comes up further. So next, just wanted to talk about uh, generating money, right? So that's usually uh, trading time when I talk about it, it's probably employment, right? So where you give time for a specific number of hours and uh, certain deliverables that we uh, make and in turn, generate money right so that's that's been the uh been the i've been in that space where i have moved into uh the other space recently uh but most of us i think that's that's how it had been either we had been there or continue to be there or it's about uh maybe you're transitioning or you you are in both places could be that right so that's one aspect where you can generate money second one is about to solve problem and add value Right, so this is more from um, as an entrepreneur, or if you have a business, you focus on what is it you, you you really don't look from your trading time for generating money, but you are more keen on what is it I can solve for somebody, 
and uh, how can i partner with them and what what is the kind of value addition that i can make so probably it's all about knowing what our skills are which can be monetized or about adding a new skill which i want to monetize at some at, at a later point in time right so maybe coaching can be one such place right so where you, you get that ability to transform yourself where you are able to solve the problem for others bring in a value addition and you have business model where you can generate the money right could be other skills that someone want to consider right so it's it's all about being aware and uh, how can you plan for that third aspect uh, would be uh, to to invest and grow you have money you want that to grow you create that wealth keeping certain needs that you have for the future so these are the three different ways that could be other way also maybe inheritance could be there but uh, i don't think there'll be too many lucky people will have that inheritance by and large i think will be in this kind of a space where we are in when it comes to generating money moving on to the next one the third part which i want to talk about which is on the investments again when i said the uh, investments part moving into the personal space personal finance space um as well as we just want to tie back to what we said about generating money we'll come to that in the fourth part when we talk about that so some of the aspects that i've covered here this may not be an exhaustive list but at least for this presentation i felt that if we put these aspects then we'll have some context to discuss in discuss for the next two slides so what does this represent is um there are low risk investments there are medium risk investments high risk investments risk wise you can classify them and you can classify them as financial assets or physical assets or you take a make certain investments where you focus on your safety net the yellow portion here is shown separately is mostly from your safety net keeping um, maybe contingencies in mind as well as what do i want to do for the next 20 years right so how do i build a corpus for retirement could be that right so it's most of us mostly it's like a safety net so could be any of these space we can see it from risk we can see it from different categories of investments and time horizon could be different right so um, you may invest for a specific period of time um, it could be for one year where you want to park some money for somewhere or you want to um, consider maybe 3 to 4 year 5 years of horizon or beyond that could be any of that space as well or somebody who is interested in say i want to generate wealth or i want my investment to grow but i'm also interested in a social cause right so there are opportunities where that can be done as well where you meet both your needs if my if your value system says that i want to generate money but not but i also want a specific purpose to be there i want uh, maybe for a social cause is something which i like a lot to do uh, where i make an investment there could be in that space as well and uh, gold i mentioned specifically gold here which is usually physical asset but based on my experience what i have seen is that uh, most of the times it remains in the bank lockers but i think there is a strong association with that right from indian houses we have seen that and uh, uh, the so much of attachment emotional attachment to gold um it's, it's pretty much there there is certain belief system when it comes to gold as well so what is that for you i've just put it out here specifically calling it out so that you can think about these aspects and when it comes to say mutual funds or shares what showing up for you high risk i don't know that domain or what's what's coming up right so i'll just leave it here with this and uh, move to the next slide so some of the key considerations that i wanted to get our attention here when it comes to investments do i know my needs what is the purpose for which i want to make an investment specifically keeping in mind some of them could be like for education children's education i know there is 
specific point in time where I need X amount of money. Or it could be about uh, marriage coming up in the family where you want to accumulate money that you want and there is a specific need that comes up. Or it could be the safety in it that I mentioned, right? So it could be for health, it could be for uh, some of the needs that are quite longer in time, but I want to prepare myself for that. Do I have the clarity in my mind as to why I want to make that investment? This becomes an important question to ask. Second is the time horizon. So like I said, uh, probably I'm, I'm looking to park my money only for a year's time, or I have an horizon of say three to five years, or it can be five years and beyond. And some of them can be as long as 15 years also. So do I have needs identified and do I have a clear time horizon identified for those? The third aspect is how liquid the money should be. So liquid, when I say liquidity, uh, in terms of how quickly can you convert a financial asset into money where it's readily available for your disposal. In the previous slide, I think we saw about some of those assets which are quite long-term and particularly if you take a physical assets of house property and land, that's got its own challenges, right? So you invest for a long period of time and when you want to dispose it, it's not going to be that easy. You need to have certain uh, time frame in your mind as to when, how quickly you can do that. So it may take, um, I don't know, I mean, could be in the range of six months or one year um, where you may have to identify the right buyer for that. So keeping that need time horizon in mind, how liquid you want to keep your money to be. So which means you need to choose an investment that's going to give you that flexibility. And there are certain investments where there's a lock-in period. For example, the public provident fund. From tax standpoint, huge savings. Huge savings in the sense you don't need to pay any taxes on the wealth that you generate, as well as on the interest that gets accumulated. But there is a lock-in period. You have to be invested for 15 years. You get an opportunity to withdraw after five years, but that's only a small portion of the money. right? So what happens in case you need money at certain points in time where it doesn't serve you, right? So you can't break and then take it. So keeping liquidity in mind is also an important aspect. The other one is, fourth one here is, I have a loan on one side, which is a liability for me. And the other side, I'm trying to create an asset in form of investments. What will be prudent for me to do? Would I want to reduce the loan, which is there, reduce the repayment period, if I have a 10-year horizon where I'm looking at as uh, repayment of loan, would I want to bring that down so that I will have, I'm, I'm free of that liability, right? So this, is, this could also be a consideration that one may have to look at when it comes to these investments. Moving on, this other important aspect is about risk assessment. And I want to know what is, when I want to make an investment, I need to know what, what is my risk appetite. So the previous slide we saw about assets which are low risk, high risk, medium risk. But what do I, what, what is the, what is, what is I'm up to? What is my, this, this is where again, your belief system will come up, your values might come up, your relationship with money come up, right? So based on my experience, when I made that investments a couple of years back is in financial asset, the financial advisor asked me a um, few questions based on which he said that uh, maybe I think we can take a conservative approach. That's what is coming up. But again, that was not done based on what exactly my need was or what is the time horizon I was looking at. I didn't have clarity at that point in time, I went with that. So would it be a better approach to look at a time frame based assessment, risk assessment? If I have a money which I can maybe lock it up for a longer period of time, five years and more, can I afford to take high risk there? Because there will be market corrections that will happen at certain points in time. And long term, when we talk about the, uh, the economy is going to look different. Your uh, money would have grown different. And by the time you reach that goal or that period of time, 
you would have grown in terms of your earning capacity as well, right? So where you can afford to have, take that risk when it comes to long-term assets or long-term time frame. Whereas when it comes to medium term, medium risk, short term could be low risk. And when it's imminent, when you don't know that a specific goal for which I have made that investment is, is coming up very shortly. Maybe like I said, the education or marriage or some function that's happening in the family where I need that money. How do I move that asset to make it no risk rather than keeping it as a high risk or a medium risk, right? So that's this more of a thinking uh, which needs to happen at the back of our mind. That's, that's the intent with which I'm, I'm sharing this. Next one is about uh, having the right financial advisor. So I think two aspects to look at, right? So when it comes to financial advice is this, is certainly look for knowledge, the skill and process, the ability to uh, understand the process and how to do that. Skill matters a lot as well as knowledge. The other aspect is more of how much of trust can you build with the, with the advisor? And is there a deep awareness of your need? So having the right balance, having only one is not going to help. How can I have the right balance? How can I get that kind of a, a, a service from the financial advisor that's going to help me so that I can make the right kind of investments that I want to make? So having that right balance is important. But based on whatever we discussed so far, previous slide and uh, the two blocks here, what we have discussed so far, how clear you are in your head matters a lot. What you seek is what is going to come to you, right? So if there is a clarity in your head in terms of what you're looking at or what you're looking for, you may be able to get that. Otherwise, you will be, um, be in a space where maybe the advisor is looking at his own needs that he's going to look for commissions that are going to come more for him and maybe suggesting that. So this is the other aspect I wanted to talk about. Moving on to the third one, which is more of impediments that can come our way. I'm just conscious about time as well. Uh, we'll go a little bit fast here so that we'll be able to cover the next part as well and keep some time for questions and reflections. So the uh, this part, I think we're talking more from what's controllable and what's not in my control. When you look at these aspects, right, when it comes to investments, this has been discussed, my needs and specific purpose. Definitely have a say on that. It's, it's my need. How can I look to gain more clarity in that space rather than looking at the plethora of options that are available? If you take mutual fund itself, hundreds of thousands of options are there. Shares, similarly, um, different industries, different choices that I have. And I have my own thinking. I, want, I don't want to make investment in certain businesses because my value system doesn't allow that. Those things, those aspects could be there, but the options are many. But if I'm clear in terms of what I need, it becomes a lot more easier to ask for what, what I need. Then second one is about perfection. So looking for a perfect space, a perfect time for to make an investment move, that's not going to happen, right? So maybe could be trial and error at some point in time, or maybe start small to, to see what's happening, to get an understanding of uh, if it's a new domain, I'm saying, if, if you're venturing into some new domains which where you don't have that experience. Start small and then see how, how things progress. But I think important thing is to how to overcome that inertia to invest. What's coming up again? What's what's your belief system saying about that? How do you go beyond that? Is there a fear that's gripping you, which you want, you're not able to make progress? What is it you want to address? That's something which, again, is in your control. Right time to invest. It's nothing called as a right time in the market because it's all about um, whether you invest or not. And depending on the kind of risk that you want to take and the time horizon, that's going to determine what's going to be the right time. So it's about, uh, again, one example that came up to my mind is that 
I will wait for the tide to stop so that I can go into the seats. Never going to happen, right? So it's that's not in my control. I choose to go or not is something which I can focus on rather. Quantitative and qualitative factors is again numbers. You have numbers of uh, company that you want to invest in, or it could be on mutual funds or any other place. You can you can work on the numbers to some extent as well as some qualitative factors. More on the culture of the company. If you take maybe example of Tata, some association about some emotion about that organization that we connect with. There are certain qualitative factors that we may want to consider from the culture standpoint or what the company stands for, or right. So the, those aspects can be considered. That's in my control. Rather than looking at macroeconomic factors, or what happens to the GDP or the interest rates. Um, or about war that's happening, what is, what's going to be the impact on the global economy. Absolutely no control on that, but those are factors to consider, but I don't have a say on that is what the point that I want to drive here. Diversification and small consistent amounts is another way where I can manage. If, if I want to try it, I want to diversify rather than maybe risk. I will look for based on risk and then diversify my assets and see uh, how can I make small consistent amount so that I, that takes care of the any of the market corrections that can happen rather than looking at the fund performance or market behavior which is sensex can move it can drop at some point in time it can move higher a lot of um, emotions are attached to that. that that creates a lot of anxiety about what's happening in the market without even noticing what's happening to the funds that we have and uh, how how the uh, the particular asset is performing that could be another aspect to look at. Tax planning. I think mindset previously uh, was, or I don't know, it could be there now as well, is for to save tax, I make an investment. Rather than that, do, do I want to grow money and handle the taxes that comes up in the way as something? That's that's part of the, it's, it's law of the land, which I need to adhere to and uh, handle that rather than making an investment for the purpose of taxes, saving taxes rather. So the tax laws, we don't have any control on that aspect as well. So I just wanted to bring these aspects, put that into perspective here. So moving on to the next slide, are there any pressing questions that's coming up anyone wants to ask now or good to go to the next slide? Next one is the last slide as well. Okay, I'll move on. So consolidating whatever we have discussed so far, the important aspect is to address the question of what's my relationship with money, starting from there, focusing on the values and beliefs, limiting beliefs, how do I overcome that? And with the value system, what I have, how do I build on what I want to do? Knowing my needs very clearly, having that clarity in my head, focusing on the controllables, what we discussed in the previous slide, is a way to leading to having that abundant mindset. There is other way to look at it as well. Do I want to have happen all of these things to happen to feel abundant or do you want to start with the feeling of being abundant then approach it this way it's anyways a cyclical process if i have an abundant mindset rather than being scared or having that scarcity mindset if i'm able to shift that elevate that in my mind if i'm able to create that kind of a relationship how would i look at money would it be different? What? How do I overcome the beliefs, limiting beliefs that I have? My needs are clear and I'm focusing on the controllables rather than looking at the uncontrollables. There is another way to look at it. The other dimension, if I flip it, if I have that scarcity mindset and, and I'm looking at money from that perspective, there is going to be that kind of relationship that's that's going to show up leading into values and beliefs 
determining your needs which may or may not be right tendency to focus not on not on the controllable but focusing on the uncontrollables as well leading into anxiety and then getting you into a space where you continue to feel that scarcity i think this is the choice that i want us to look at this is this is what i wanted to put together as a consolidation of whatever we have discussed so far and a quick summary here inner work matters just a reflection of what i said right so how do you want to feel about yourself what is what's coming up for you when it it's when it's about money inner work will help you to handle the outer world in a much powerful way peace of mind choosing what what you want to see where you want to see it's absolutely your choice if we're going to look at the one example is macroeconomic factors is that what is going to drive you or rather do you want to look at what's my need and what's my purpose what do i make an investment and what is the outcome i am looking at that's a choice liquidity critical aspect i think i have seen this in in organizations as well right so when when you don't have sufficient funds you end up borrowing money in in corporates i have seen that right so end up borrowing money at a higher cost of right your cost of servicing that debt is going to be much higher so liquidity is something which again in personal finance as well is something which is quite quite important in in uh, business as well right the last fourth aspect is about securing the future the safety net that i mentioned and the yellow portion that i said we'll talk about that in the subsequent slide right the skill set what i had developed how can i make use of that in solving problem for the or adding value which can help me to generate that and have a plan for me for the future at the same time how do i want my investment to grow retirement corpus which i mentioned it requires investments to happen at a period at point in time so that it grows at a sufficient rate it at least beats the inflation growth so that your cost of living at that point in time is getting serviced right so which means making that wise choice of investment is also an important factor seeking support and resources absolutely must these are the thoughts that i wanted to leave you with now it's questions and any reflections that comes up yaragu you have your hand raised yeah so i just wanted to share a couple of uh, quotes you know which are old ones but probably has started influencing me more now um may not be using the exact words so forgive me uh so one is uh, you know i cried because i had no shoes until i saw a person who had no feet so it's about you know being content and uh, you know having that mindset and there is one more uh, which says uh, you know when you are blessed financially raise your standard of giving and not living so that goes back to what you're saying about you know abundance and scarcity mindset your uh, needs are endless because you probably have a scarce mindset and uh, i think when you change that to an abundance mindset it makes sense at the name yeah yeah thank you thank you raghu for sharing that yeah absolutely rekha you have a raise hand yeah i loved it when you flipped it and you started at abundance because i think that is for me it resonates as the starting point whether it's abundance or scarcity and i was just thinking if we could extend that and make it an abundance mindset not only respect to money like abundance uh, with with respect to love let's say or abundance with respect to peace or anything that is important to us in our lives and if it was a mindset of abundance then it need not be limited only to money and then how that might show up in our lives is what i was reflecting on thanks for that absolutely thank you thank you rekha i think it's it's like what what i have is what i can give if i have if i feel scarcity that's what i can give 
if I feel abundant, that's what is going to show up and that's what I can offer as well. Absolutely applies in any area of life. And I was just looking at the abundance, meaning a very large quantity of something. So what is that large quantity? That's, that itself is a relative term, right? Can I be able to address that directly? Or what is the way? It's, is, is it like you feel that way or you want to work through some other way? I think that's why I said that, let's flip it and see, where do you want to start? Then focus on relationship with money and then start from there or start from abundance. Any other questions or any comments? Anything that's cooking up for anyone? I think you have created a very reflective space so people are busy reflecting. Yep. So I can share my evocation. Um, you know, I think uh, out of the 29 people present here, probably a lot of us have come from corporate backgrounds and become coaches. So at least my discovery through life has been that whether it's a corporate context or the coaching context, professional context, uh, if we focus on what we love doing, money ensues as a byproduct. And uh, even in corporate context, when I work with the C-suite leaders uh, and the transformational journeys, you know, money, profit is like breath because the organization will not survive without it. But at the same time, uh, my what I notice repeatedly is if they pursue money, they fail. Money ensues as a byproduct of doing what they're passionate about. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, Anil, absolutely. I think uh, generating money, I think that's the part we touched upon as well, right? So thanks for pointing it out. It's about what is the validation that I can make and what problems can I solve? So money becomes a byproduct there. You can't directly look for money. And uh, I think that's that's been a big revelation as well, being in corporate and out of it. Now we have to create everything from the scratch. As a solo owner, I think that's something, that's a space I'm in. Thanks, Anil, for sharing that. On a lighter note, it reminds me of the, uh, of Three Idiots. And the philosophy and Amir Khan's philosophy. You focus on excellence, success will follow. Hmm. Yeah, Hima. Hi, JL. Uh, so uh, my thoughts I thought I'll share with you. Uh, after joining coaching, the shift, how the shift has happened for me. And when you're uh, explaining about shifting the mindset, there's a lot of resonance which is happening with me. Just wanted to bring it uh, here. So as a parent, my concern always used to be, and sometimes always is, how do I leave a... Hey, I've gone on mute. Sorry. So build an inheritance to my son. How do I... I mean, for my next generation or for my future, for my retirement, but major part of it as a parent has been more on how do I help my child not go through something which I went through and that's the means would be money. But then uh, with coaching, I, I think that's the beauty of coaching also. Slowly, my mindset shifted towards uh, money he will earn, but I should make him capable enough so that even if I leave an inheritance, he'll be able to manage or he can build his own inheritance. I don't need to be after him or uh, work around it. I have to make him more capable. So that's a shift in the mindset which happens. So I just wanted to, you know, share it with everybody here uh, that, <laughs> that that's a shift. And when you're expressing about mindset shift, uh, there's a lot of resonation uh, which is happening for me. Thank you. Thank you, Bindu, for sharing that. Shweta, you had your hand raised. you have anything to say? 
Hi, uh, JL. So I've been in one of your sessions for the first time and um, attended throughout. And I had just wanted to acknowledge how beautifully you've brought everything into the, you know, into the picture, uh, leading to that abundant mindset and uh, that generating money. And I just wanted to applaud you, acknowledge you for uh, doing it so wonderfully, bringing in so many aspects. And um, just wanted to add how, uh, for me, the generation of money is how Rekha was saying, uh, you know, or you were also mentioning when you're doing something that you love and uh, being who you are in the moment, not following the reality standards of what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing based on your own awareness and functioning from the abundance mindset. I think that in itself, you become the generator yourself. I mean, then, then the universe kind of just follows uh, um, your lead is what I feel. And of course, what uh, the gratitude and Arigato Mani bringing in that, um, also what Subhash was mentioning, the gratitude that goes with it. Uh, so wonderful session. Just wanted to thank you and uh, wanted to add this little thing that generation of money is for me. Very grateful to be here. Thanks to everyone. Thank you to Subhash, to you, to Rekha. Um, to Sonia and everyone else for organizing this. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta, for your nice words and uh, what you shared as well. Your reflections. Little over time now. Sorika. Okay. <clears throat> so thank you, everyone. And it was really beautiful, JL. I think it held everybody's interest and kept everyone together for such a long period of time, one hour and flowed very smoothly beautifully thank you so much for taking us through this sharing your perspectives and provoking us to think which is what coaches do thank you jay <laughs> thank you i think that was the intention as well right so data or information is available in plenty but i think this space is something which I wanted to use this for reflection if if it had served the purpose and i'm happy thank you i'm sure it did Sonia, you. you want to wind it up? Yeah, so I, I wanted, anyways, you thanked already JL, so I'll, I'll have to thank JL, but I'd also Rekha for uh, taking up uh, this session, like, you know, hosting the session also. And all thank you all of you who have been patient enough to attend the whole session. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, the recording will be soon uploaded. So, uh, just in case if you feel to revisit, you can always view it, right? And uh, have a great evening ahead. So thank you. Thank you.